Welcome back guys. In this episode we explore the world-renowned Serengeti National Park, another bucket list item. The planning of the whole trip was centered around where we hoped to find the wildebeest migration. We aimed for the Grometi River in the Western Corridor and just hoped we'd got it right. It had rained most of the night at Kuru Lodge and we got up to a chilly overcast day. We made our way back into the NCA for the transit to Serengeti. Yes, we had to pay the normal 24 hour fee for the NCA even though we were just transiting. The name Serengeti is derived from the Sai word Serenget which means endless plains and this was immediately obvious when looking north from the top of the crater. It's about a four hour drive to Knob Hill Gate. The NCA permit is not valid for the Serengeti and we had to get a new Serengeti access permit. We had a bit of an admin issue at the gate. We had booked and paid online but there was no sign of our booking on the system. After about a three hour delay talking to the Tanapa head office in Arusha, it transpired that the final confirmation part of the reservation hadn't been done and that's why they didn't know how to deal with us. Once it was sorted we were on our way. One consolation with the 24-hour permit system was that the later we got into Serengeti, the less rushed we would be in having to get out. There was definitely a ranking difference between these two hyenas. Approaching Serenera, we went past what was to become aptly named the Stinky Hippo Pool. For the first night, we opted to stay in a public campsite in central Serengeti as we knew we may be arriving quite late and we didn't want to struggle to find one of the special campsites in the dark. This turned out to be a good decision as we only got to Duck Duck campsite in the very late afternoon. This is probably one of the best lion sightings we've ever had.
second night threw a serious curveball at us. We had booked Bella Bella Special Campsite, which is about halfway down the Western Corridor, and we had arranged that the Balloon Safari guys collect us from there early the next morning. After a leisurely game drive out to the waypoint, we discovered a sign in the tall grass, but no sign of a road or a campsite. We had driven past quite a big felt fire, and we were not keen on carving out a clearing in the tall grass with fire around. Also, if we couldn't find the campsite, how were the balloon guys going to find it at 5 o'clock in the morning? So we decided to drive back to the central area and go and talk to the guys at the balloon office. Together with the Tanapa Ranger, they decided to let us stay in Serra 6, another wild campsite in the central area. And what's more, they drove us there so that they would be sure to find us in the morning. We came across this little guy crossing the busy road and moved him off into the bushes. In case you were wondering, a special campsite doesn't mean fancy facilities. It means no facilities at all. And what's special about it is that you feel completely on your own. A lot of the Ahina look pretty second-hand, something which I'm sure the lions could answer for. We were up early for the collection and were driven off to the launching site. This is a 16 passenger plus pilot. Each compartment holds two people. I'll be standing in the middle. I think we're one less than full today. So let me just demonstrate. So you're gonna get in here like an astronaut. Inside this the uh, compartment, there's a, a seating cushion. You have to shift around to take a look. There's the carabiner, and where that silver ring is, you're just gonna clip it. Just like that. You'll grab the handles. The basket will stand upright, you'll stand upright, and then you'll be in a seated position. And just remain seated until I say you can stand. Then we were upright, time for a last photo before liftoff. Okay. Do you need any pictures of yourself in the basket? Hand your camera off to one of our staff members to take a picture for you.
We're going to start low at first, after we'll go higher. Also, we'll be changing the orientation of the basket. I can't steer the balloon mechanically. I find different layers of wind, but I can rotate it by opening a vent to the side of the balloon. The world seems small. We can It's so beautiful. Floating off on the prevailing breeze, apart from the occasional burner blast, it was incredibly peaceful and silent, skimming over the trees and grass, and then occasionally climbing up for a panoramic view of this amazing place. You were at the mercy of the elements, with both your speed and direction being at the discretion of the wind. Yes, you guessed right, the stinky hippo pool. I'm just sitting here. I got time. It's clear to see. From up here, the world seems small. Probably haven't flown over cart. We can sit together. It's so beautiful, you and me, we meant to be, in the great outdoor, forever free. At times we were mere centimeters from the top of the trees. Like a bird on a tree 
I'm just sitting here. We counted about 16 hyena at this day. It's clear to see from up here. The world seems small. We can sit together. It's so beautiful. You and me. So it still may tip over. We still want to. Yeah. Been in the air for just over an hour, and now it's time for a full on champagne breakfast. That's a good job. Really nice. Hey! Oh, I tried. Hey! 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 Sun has blessed us with its warm hands. We have flown so high and so well that nature has joined us in laughter and set us back again into the loving arms of Mother Earth. So instead of saying cheers here in Tanzania and repeat after me, we like to say Maisha, Maisha, Marefu, Marefu, which means elephant poop, <laughs> <laughs> which actually means long life. So. Maisha Mara, long life to you. Long life. <laughs> that smells good. Dumbo. Dumbo. Oh, we in for a little spoil. The Bapli. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> say hi. Hello, Thank you. Well, that had been absolutely fantastic. Little did we know that the day had another surprise in store for us. But first, back to camp at Sierra 6 to get our vehicles. Now, hopefully, we could go and find the migration herd. We then drove back west towards where the Bella Bella campsite sign had been and asked a few of the game viewers. Turn right at the 10 ton sign is what we could get from them. So that's what we did. This is amazing, hey? Wildebeest as far as the eye can see. Brooklyn, I've seen pictures of the Serengeti. Um, this is what I've seen.
Good lord, there's millions of them. Meant to add to the drama, the heavens opened up and it bucketed down. It's at times like this that you hope like hell the rooftop tent is sealed nice and tight. All the wildebeest had dropped their heads and were probably licking rainwater off the grass. Now another three. Ooh, three more. By this stage we had been driving in amongst the herd for about seven Ks. And then all of a sudden, near the airstrip, not a single wildebeest to be seen. The next day the skies had cleared and it was hot and steamy. We had the whole day to explore the area at our leisure. We decided to go back and look for the herd. Not the easiest bird to get such a clear photo of. Yesterday the multitudes of wildebeest had been quite spread out. Today we were to witness a different picture.
One thing we saw a hell of a lot of was rutting males squabbling over females. Back to camp on the road, which just a few hours earlier had no wildebeest on it at all. Now here was another highlight of our time in Serengeti. This big bull tusker was just magnificent. After graciously posing for a few pics, he decided he'd had enough and he ambled off into the distance. These vultures were feeding on a young wildebeest, one of the many casualties scattered in the wake of the migration. We'd seen a lookout point on the map, but we weren't sure if it was inside the park or not. With no fences, the boundaries aren't that obvious. It was behind the Grometi airstrip, it was within the park boundary, and it's well worth the drive. And then we were at the gate, and it was time to say goodbye to a very special place. This bus driver made it very clear that he wasn't prepared to wait for these cows to cross the bridge. We were off to Mwanza on the shores of Lake Victoria for a two-night spoil at the Malaika Beach Resort.
Hello.